between their legs. Their foot must, must go through the stick around their hips and back up to the body. At this point, the player must put the stick through their legs and with their other foot through their arms, over their hips, up the body and back to the starting position. Canada flag and I'm going to paint a feather inside the wing and then blend it all in with colors. I'm going to do a uh, sunset inside the top part here oh, and paint nice. it all. Yeah, so hopefully I'm done it in the next couple of days and call it from there. <laughs> it takes you that quick? Pardon me? It takes you that fast? To... I, I work steadily, eh? I work mm -hmm. day and night so like I try to alternate my time with my wife and mm -hmm. we have a special needs baby that where we try to balance our time and what we do and, yeah. and everything. And yeah. We all work together as a team. Oh, that's awesome. And our kids are involved too and they help me do eating. I got my family that helps me a lot, supports me. So do you guys know what you're going to make uh, before you make it or does it just kind of... Just as I go, eh? Yeah. I, yeah. I try to think of what I want to make. And then I'll just be creative and let it come to me as I go, eh? Oh, nice. If not good enough for me, then I won't sell it, eh? Yeah. <laughs> oh, nice. The two hoops in each hand, like so. Keep them up like that. This is stage is what we call a mother and father stage. When you put them together, they create that life, okay? So when you put them together, that create you. And also, after that, that life comes marriage. And you talk about jumping through hoops. Just kidding. <laughs> I think maybe about 10 years ago, uh, Shoshona has a great aunt that um, uh, went through residential schools. And she came over to our place one night and um, just unannounced, you know, she came in at like two o'clock in the morning. She's like, Raven. I was like, hey, auntie. <laughs> she goes, I need some Bob Marley. <laughs> okay, no problem. We'll put it on. <laughs> so we were like jamming to Bob Marley. And she kept us up for like about two and a half days straight. And she just told us her full story of um, being at residential schools and how she wow. tried to overcome that. You wow. know, but she, one it, super empowering thing that she said was that, you know, we have to bring back the knowledge that we have and integrated in a modern context. And she was talking about this thing like that we call song lines now. And she said that, you know, back in the day as Anishinaabe people, we used to be nomadic and we used to travel along the lakes and rivers and such. And, you know, we'd go and settle down and be at a campground or something. And then, you know, after, you know, you set up your shop and your tent and whatnot, um, you know, you take out your hand drum and you start reading the land and you start seeing like, you know, say there's a mountain that goes up like that, and then a valley that goes down like that, and goes back up, and way, 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 oh, oh. You know, you start making melodies off of the land. Wow. And um, that's what we, we took the heart from, from her telling us those teachings. And uh, right from the second album to now, like, um, we've been taking like panoramic pictures wherever we travel, whether we're in you know Australia or uh, Europe or you know in the Rockies, and um, and we keep a, a catalog of that. And uh, every now and then, you know, I'll just look at it and you know start singing a little melody that I get from it, and then I'll let that sit, you know. And then every now and then it just starts to come out in the yeah. songs, and then we'll put a you know a reggae beat to it or something, and, yeah, <laughs> and then yeah. put some lyrics to whatever's happening in, at the time, you know.
after they're inside their, their, their gallery? Yeah, so, uh, so 22 of the 37 chiefs. <laughs> Hello. Hello. You want me to just Yeah, talk just tell about me what that? you're doing at Nag. Okay, uh, we're with the elder storytelling tent, uh, specifically the native uh, or the heritage group, uh, which is our Treaty 4, Treaty 4 Heritage Interpretive Committee uh, sets up the 2D4 gallery to display. Uh, for myself, I'm, as my uh, photography background, I was able to uh, get this picture out my back uh, back door. It's, to me, it was uh, significant because it, uh, the feather image drew me, and I had had uh, a weak battery. Uh, I could, so it wouldn't let me focus. So I had to settle on the focus that was with the point and shoot and uh, uh, what else I, uh, I couldn't uh, focus to because the battery is on I just had to one shot uh, uh, with 300 pictures full I had to dump one in order to take, take the picture too so the image uh, came later of a face in the feather with the forehead and the nose being uh, obvious with the eyes and the mouth quite uh, predominant features so just kind of I never said male or female, and uh, I let people have a look at it first before I get an interpretation. And uh, a lady had said she reminded her of her grandmother's with uh, the kerchief styles. So uh, it's open to interpretation. Like uh, uh, why we have them on display is uh, because they're interpretive. It also leads into our treaty for interpretive. Uh, pictograph that Chief Pasqua had uh, had uh, did a uh, hundred years ago uh, and we have gotten back so that's another one of the projects is to uh, interpret uh, uh, their interpretation I guess so, because it had been disappeared for a hundred years it's hard to conclude what uh, he had been saying James, when you came into the group, you came into the group a little while ago. Uh, talk about what was happening before you came into the group and what's happening now for you. Uh, well, before I came in the group, I was playing a lot of video games. Uh, <laughs> you laugh, but... <laughs> yeah, he's not yeah, joking. Yeah, he's like a world champion. champion. He's a... <laughs> Um, Hanging out with James, you like you learn something new about him every day. <laughs> and they're always like this crazy astronomical... So, yeah, so we find he's like, yeah, I play video games. We're like, oh yeah, we play these too. He's like, yeah, I'm like a, a champion though. He's like, get out of here, you're a champion. He's like, yeah, I'm like top ten in the world at like Street Fighter. And like, no, you are not. He's like, oh yeah, look it up. And then like, on, YouTube. Yeah, YouTube right away. And there's James Jones like competing with like world champion Street Fighter ten year old Japanese player. kids. You are legitimately a world champion video game player? Well, I mean, I, I played with a lot of the champions. Well, I mean... <laughs> I, I, I... <laughs>